Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Joel Khoury, and today's topic is acute kidney injury. What is it? Why we need to redefine it? And more importantly, how hospital labs measuring creatinine can help us better detect it. Acute kidney injury, or AKI, is broadly defined as a sudden loss of kidney function. Typically, when the kidneys stop working as effectively over a short period of time, usually around two days or less. This can happen more frequently in patients taking certain medications that can be nephrotoxic or undergoing certain medical procedures like cardiopulmonary bypass surgery. And it is a very serious condition, needing immediate medical attention to avoid more serious complications like irreversible kidney damage, kidney failure, and death. So yeah, it's bad and it's estimated to affect around 15% of hospitalized patients and up to half of patients in the intensive care unit. So the reason we're talking about AKI today is because there's a real problem with the way we currently define it and therefore are able to detect it and treat it. In 2012, a global nonprofit organization called Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcomes, or KDGO for short, at least a guideline to help healthcare providers in caring for adults and children at risk for or with AKI. In that guideline, they defined AKI based on changes in the kidney biomarker serum creatinine and urine output. For creatinine, they defined AKI based on an increase of 0.3 milligrams per deciliter or greater, that's 26.5 micromoles per liter for the rest of the world, happening within 48 hours or an increase of 50% or greater from baseline within seven days. For urine output, a urine volume less than 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour for six hours suggests AKI. But urine volume is rarely measured and in a clinical setting, so our ability to detect AKI rapidly hinges almost entirely on detecting a 0.3 milligram per deciliter increase or greater in two days. The problem here is that this definition was consensus-based, not supported by biological or analytical variability data, which is not surprising considering the consensus group did not include any clinical chemists or clinical pathologists on the team. If you're trying to get to the moon, the very least you can do is have one or two engineers on your team who know how spaceships and rockets work. I'm not questioning your flying abilities, Maverick, but you can't fly an F-14A Tomcat fighter to the moon. So the outcome of that suboptimal KDGO definition was, it generated a lot of false positives. Up to 31% in patients with creatinine values greater than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter. And it caused a delay in detecting AKI in patients with creatinine values below one milligram per deciliter, especially in the pediatric populations where creatinine tends to be very low. This led most clinicians and researchers to think that creatinine is a poor marker for AKI. But here's the thing. You can only blame something for so much when it is our lack of understanding of how to use it properly that's the problem. I get it. I would be upset too if I ordered a bookshelf from Ikea, received blocks of wood, but couldn't figure out how to build it properly. But when I leave a one-star review on their website, is that really a reflection of the product, the instructions, or my own building abilities? We will never know. But I would sure hope IKEA gives me the benefit of the doubt and improves their instructions. A good place to start would be this one. I have a few questions here. First, where am I going to find a corded phone to call you? Or, are you suggesting that I come over, grab one of your phones, walk out to the parking lot, wrap the cord around my body, then give you a call to figure out what those instructions mean? So let us then begin by clarifying the instructions for using creatinine to detect AKI by stating what an evidence-based definition should be. To answer that question, we turn to a concept in laboratory medicine called reference change value, or RCV for short. Simply put, RCV is a number we can calculate for a given analyte like creatinine to say that a change in this amount is significant or highly significant. That number is derived using two main variables, analytical variation, termed CVA, 
which is basically reporting how stable my instrument's performance is. In other words, how much the number changes if I test the same sample multiple times on my instrument over several days or weeks. And two, intra-individual biological variation termed CVI, a fancy term reporting how stable the analyte is within the same individual over several days or weeks. Now, as laboratory experts, we know that analytical variation can be different between methods and across different concentration ranges. We also know that intra-individual biological variation can be different between healthy and diseased individuals, like those with stable chronic kidney disease, for example. Luckily, biological variation studies were done in individuals with healthy kidney function and those with moderate and advanced chronic kidney disease, at least for creatinine. So we have all of this information on how creatinine varies analytically and biologically for the low and high concentration values. Taking that and using everyone's favorite subject, math, we can calculate what change in serial results is highly significant for the low and high concentration end. For creatinine, greater than or equal to one milligrams per deciliter, our group recently reported that a change of 20% is highly significant. For creatinine, less than one milligrams per deciliter, we calculated that a change of 0.2 milligrams per deciliter or 20 micromoles per liter is highly significant. Now, it is important to remember that these are estimates and we rounded numbers for convenience and called this the 2020 AACC AKI definition for the 20 micromoles per liter or 20% change. See the rest of the world? Sometimes in America, we use SI units when we don't have to. It's because we care. For the US, I guess we can use 20.2 to remember 20% or 0.2 milligrams per deciliter change, but it's just not as catchy. Either way, recognizing that performance varies by method, we even added a table in the newly released AACC Academy guidance documents for labs using methods with different variabilities, so they can use an appropriate RCV suitable to that method. That said, critics right now may be asking, so what? So what if a change is highly significant based on calculations? It's just math after all. It doesn't mean the patient has AKI or is developing AKI. Actually, it kind of does. A 2020 study published in scientific reports involving close to 15,000 adults showed that a change of 0.2 milligrams per deciliter or 20% happening within 24 hours is associated with all-cause mortality and can help detect AKI earlier. Another study showed that a 20% change even in the long term, around 12 months, is associated with cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. For pediatric patients, a 2018 study published in the Journal of the American Society of Nephrology and involving over 100,000 hospitalized children proposed a new criterion for pediatric AKI, 0.2 milligrams per deciliter or 30% because of increased risk of death in that population due to these changes. There are a number of factors that can account for the differences between our proposed 20% and their 30%, but this is just another study reinforcing the same concept and with similar estimates. We also recognize that it is hard for healthcare providers to calculate 20% of anything. And no, we're not asking them to carry calculators, although I do think it would look nice in that white pocket next to that stethoscope. I recommend my personal favorite, the TI-30XIIS. Just look at that beauty. But the reality is, this definition is eventually not meant to make life harder for healthcare providers by having them calculate the difference every time they get a creatinine result on a patient. Nephrologists have been trying to build electronic AKI alerts, which are pop-ups, yes, like those annoying ads, except these can be useful and show up in their hospital information systems when a certain change in creatinine occurs. That way, healthcare providers are automatically notified of an AKI sooner and can take quicker action. The problem here has been that most of the studies evaluating the utility of electronic AKI alerts have not been promising. And we think that the suboptimal KDGO definition used to trigger these alerts is part of the reason why. So what then can hospital labs do 
with this new information to help us detect AKI sooner? Well, for starters, make sure you're using creatinine assays with acceptable imprecision for detecting AKI. We define that as a minimum coefficient of variation, or CV, of less than 3.4% across the majority of the creatinine assays measurement range. Talk to your healthcare providers about this data and see what language or action they would be comfortable in taking when such a change is detected by the laboratory. Some may argue for simply adding a comment that states what constitutes a significant change to all or some results. That alone will provide useful education passively to those digging in the medical chart, but may not be helpful to detect AKI sooner. Others may prefer flagging the result, sort of like you do with an abnormal result or a delta check. And this visual flag may more quickly alert a provider to an important change when reviewing results. It's a plus that they wouldn't have to take out those TI calculators and calculate it themselves. More extreme and disruptive actions like automated alerts or contacting the clinicians as if it is a critical result should be carefully evaluated. I state that because in one study, implementation of AKI alerts using KDGO criteria at a non-teaching hospital actually ended up harming patients with more death in the alert group than the usual care group. For this reason, we're not advocating for building electronic alerts using the new criteria we mentioned here yet. The effects of that need to be carefully studied further. So the main message from today's story is this. The 2012 KDGO consensus-based definition of AKI is outdated. The 2020 AACC AKI evidence-based criteria state that a change of 20% or 0.2 milligrams per deciliter, whichever is greater, is highly significant for creatinine and linked to poorer clinical outcomes, especially if occurring in hospitalized patients within 24 hours. It is my hope that this new set of instructions developed by a group of expert clinical nephrologists and clinical chemists will help healthcare providers detect AKI sooner and more accurately. Because in IKEA's own words, my guess is as good as yours here, but I think what they're actually trying to say is, if you're planning to develop a clinical guideline that includes laboratory testing, you don't have to do this alone. Grab a clinical chemist or pathologist. We're always happy to help you figure this mess out. That's our show. A big thank you to Drs. Dustin Bunch and Chris Cook for their review. For more information, check out our AACC Academy guidance document on the laboratory investigation of acute kidney injury in the September 2021 issue of the Journal of Applied Laboratory Medicine. Special thanks to the team, Drs. Nicole Tolan, Melanie Hunig, Graham Jones, Betty Wilson, Edmund Lamb, and Chirac Parikh. I'm Joel Khoury. Thank you for watching.